Hey, everybody. In this episode, I'm going to be talking with Lisa Boker, a clinical social worker in Rhode Island, about how to return to wholeness after you've had trauma. What does that even mean? What is wholeness? So if you feel like somebody who is disconnected from yourself or people around you, or you might feel overwhelmed or shattered, this episode's for you. See you inside. Welcome back to the CPTSD podcast, everybody. This is season three, episode two. I am here with Lisa Boker as our guest today. Say hi, Lisa. (laughs) We're going to come back to Lisa in just a minute. I just have a few um, quick announcements for you. First of all, please like, save, share, comment. That helps this video in this world, and we appreciate your support. The other thing is I wanted to remind you that I offered up the idea of an AIT training last week or in our last episode to people who are professionals. And that's one of the things we're going to be speaking with Lisa about today. She is here to help us understand how advanced integrative therapy, something I've talked a lot about on this podcast, can help return us to wholeness, which is a lovely idea. Lisa is a licensed clinical social worker in Rhode Island and is a certified advanced integrative therapy, AIT practitioner, teacher, and supervisor. She's the whole package. She helps people release the past so they can feel joyfully alive and deeply connected with themselves, their purposes, and their loved ones. Lisa believes that an extraordinary life starts by opening your heart which can sound kind of scary for those of us with CPTSD, Lisa. So thank you for for Mm. coming from that perspective. Lisa has solely used used AIT for the past 18 years in her practice uh, because of its amazing capacity to both heal unresolved trauma and promote positive growth and development. Um, Lisa's been a teacher of AIT since 2007 and is passionate about helping mental health professionals all over the world integrate AIT into their work with their clients. What we're going to be talking about today, as I mentioned before, is that return to wholeness and how AIT can support you, who those of you who have experienced CPTSD, and return to that, that true sense of you. And that means having an embodied and alive connection with your mind, body, heart, and spirit. Thank you so much for being here, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's it's such an honor to be here. And I'm a big fan of your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I really appreciate that. So I'm curious. I know what it means to me when I think about wholeness. But um, as we were talking about before, most of our clients don't come in and say, I need to become whole again. That's not usually what drives <laughs> us into therapy. And so in my experience, um, CPTSD, complex trauma in particular, is very shattering. And oh. a lot of us might feel that shatteredness inside of us, like there are too many pieces of us or they don't connect. I would love to hear your perspective on what does it mean to return to wholeness? Mm, Yeah. Well, wholeness came to me for a few different reasons as something that would be really important to talk about in relationship to to complex PTSD. So one of them is the definition of trauma in AIT talks about that when we experience trauma, its after effects continue to affect us in our present life. And when that happens, there's very, very difficult feelings and emotions and and reactions come up and our capacity to deal with that might come from positive coping strategies we know, or often from, from ways that we don't have developed. So unconscious ways of through addictions and dissociation So when we're struggling to to, uh, deal with that and our coping strategies are also causing pain, it's building up a lot inside us that's that's problematic and and difficult. And that makes it very, very hard to develop in a positive way. So it starts to affect our positive development. It fractures our sense of, of being authentic and our whole person. So when I think of that from an AIT perspective, our very definition is that trauma fractures your human wholeness. 
Then I was thinking about, um, I had watched many of your past episodes and one of the ways you talked about uh, complex PTSD is, is how it does fracture us. Like in the present, it disconnects us from things like our emotions or from our natural rhythm. So being able to relax and let our nervous system unfold. So it could be from body parts or from our relationship to our body. So I wanted to think about in this conversation, um, telling you about AIT, but also really thinking about when we're wanting to go towards wholeness, we, we have kind of two things to do. One of them is to kind of heal and, and remove and move out of the way that the things that have harmed us resolve those. And then we kind of have this space and often we need to start throwing the positive. What does that bring up for you, Tabitha? That that space and then needing to grow up the positive, it brings up for me a concept in AIT called the void, mm -hmm. yeah, which is, you know, after, after we recognize what's going on and that we need some support and maybe even start healing from that, what do we do now? Who am I now? What am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to feel? And with CPTSD in particular, Lisa, you already know this, complex trauma can become part of our personality. Yes. And so that it depends on when the void happens that, that we're talking about, if it's in healing or if it's after trauma, that mm -hmm. that is really, it's a complicated issue. Am I going down the road you were thinking of with that idea? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I think you know, the void can be a place of possibility. So like when we come into openness and spaciousness, because we've moved out the trauma, we might have a positive because we have a sense of kind of possibility, or it might be empty. It might have a sense of negative. It might be like, well, I, I've moved out these things that I've very identified with, but there isn't anything positive there. I mean, yeah, may I jump in for a sec and just say yeah. an example of this is, I'm not sure you know 100%, Lisa, um, but I am no contact with my family of origin. Um, mm -hmm. And that has been a very uh, dual-sided experience because on one hand, I'm happier and healthier than mm -hmm. I have ever been, especially the further I get out of that toxicity. Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm still very sad about that. I still mm -hmm. do want to connect with my family. And I, and there's that inside part of me, that internal child that still wants the approval and the uh -huh. love from them. So um, it's complicated, isn't it? It definitely is. <laughs> so, so what do you usually see in your practice around shattering and um and wanting to return to wholeness how does that translate as you move through mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. well definitely i have to say people don't come in saying they want wholeness <laughs> that's not usually how people describe where they're starting right like like we're often talking about um i want relief from something that's painful like what's in the way of wholeness so Maybe it's the chaotic emotions or feeling worthless or not being able to be authentic in your relationships. So when we start to talk to someone, at least this is my experience, is that I, I will sort of say like, okay, let's imagine like we've, we've healed these negative things. They're not in the way. What's important to you now? And my sense is that often that comes down to something like love, connection. So back to what you were saying is like, there's, there's an inherent need in us to be loved. And so if our parents and we're lucky and we have parents that are attuned enough and let's say they experience love, they can give us this unconditional love. And we have this, that helps us regulate our nervous system. It helps us uh, process our hurts, you know, just being held and feeling a parent's love, you know, kind of helps us move that through. I also think it, um, and this kind of comes back to my definition of wholeness. Um, if we think of wholeness, we have like our mind, we have our body, we have our hearts, and we also have our spirit. So when parents are giving us this love, this nurture, we are also learning about the, the external world. We're learning about, you know, what's, what's out there. And we're either kind of 
getting a sense of like, well, there's support or there's an absence of support. So do I have a friendly universe that supports me or not? And that's a big deal. Yes. Because when we, I mean, you know this, but I don't know if our audience always does, right? That when when we don't learn in childhood, and, and let's just agree, if it's okay with you, Lisa, that complex trauma can happen after childhood and yes. in different ways. But most of my clients have developmental trauma, and that's where the complexity is coming from. So in that situation where you're learning that you're not okay the way you are, you're not going to get the support you need. And it's scary to be in that role. We start internalizing that and then translating that into our expectations of other people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And, and so when we're talking about the way therapy unfolds here, or trauma heals itself, I just want to put a little note in there that it's going to be in layers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And it'll be a piece at a time. And that's a really good way to do it because especially with AIT. And again, I don't know what your experience has been. I'm guessing pretty great since you're solely using it in your practice. <laughs> yes. In my experience with AIT, once we get to the root of what's going on, and that can take a little bit of investigation, right? But once we get to the root there and process through that and the aspects around it, it's really not troublesome anymore. Now, we still have to figure out how to adjust to the world. But I guess what I'm saying here blatantly and, and boldly is that AIT is the one therapy I have experienced and used personally and professionally, where once an issue is resolved, it really doesn't come back around. You might get another aspect of it. You might have another experience that you have to work through, but the core is resolved. Has that been your experience as well? It's it's not partial treatment. I mean, that's the difference. Yes. It's like it's because it is incredibly precise and, and we'll go in later to more detail about what AIT is and, and how it does that. But just to kind of start with what, what maybe both Tabitha and I have, have experienced is that it's incredibly precise and it's thorough. So it really is for these things that are like complex and repetitive in our life. And then they they feel so big and they've expanded so far AIT is very systematic and precise about finding all the origins of something and treating it. And when we say treating it, as Tabitha is saying, it's 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 a permanent change. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, it's quite stunning to experience, and um, it certainly changed my life. Me too. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about how it's changed your life? Yes, <laughs> I would love to hear that story. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, it's definitely changed my life. I mean, I feel like I'm a different person who is whole, just to loop back into the idea that we're talking about here. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that's been very moving to me and in, in, in listening to past episodes was to hear you and also your previous co-host, Beth Pace, talk about your own personal experiences, because I think it normalizes this that this is not something um, that, you know, not happening to many people. It's pretty common. I mean, we, we kind of make trauma seem like it's something that just happens to others, but it's, it's happening pretty much to all of us in different ways, maybe um, sometimes more significant, sometimes not, but definitely um, I have my own complex PTSD story mm. and um, no surprise. It started with suffering. <laughs> so I, um, in my very early twenties started to have incredibly significant physical pain mm. and this was, um, compounded by autoimmune issues. And pretty soon I was debilitated. Like I really wasn't able to, um, function well in the world because the pain had really taken over my life. So I, um, quickly learned that Western medicine did not really know what to do <laughs> with my situation. Probably no surprise. <laughs> and, and it can be incredibly shaming having walked a similar road to what I'm hearing you talk about. Yep. So what did you do? Well, I, I was determined I'm not going to be 20 and stuck forever in this horrible condition. So I set out to try all the alternative methods I could find. And I really did. I went from functional medicine to acupuncture, to shamanic journeying, to spiritual traditions. And all of that was helpful. It was all part of the journey. 
But I want to say that the, the big breakthrough for me happened when I discovered energy psychology. Yeah. Energy psychology is a winner. Definitely. <laughs> How did you discover it? Um, I think I discovered it. Um, golly, I think a friend, a friend mentioned it to me and that kind of led me to EFT. And um, pretty soon I was going to ASAP conferences, the Association for Energy Psychology, and that kind of opened up the, the spectrum. And I want to say that like, what, what kind of blew my mind was two things. You could use something that you already had inherently, your body's energy system to unheal, to like heal the horrible things that happened to you. It was just like a miracle. Like it's already, you don't have to do anything. It's like inside you. <laughs> so that was incredibly important. And then also that my physical issues that I had been looking for all of these physical you know, things to support me for healing, I learned, well, I'm a whole person and everything's interfacing each other. And my chronic P PTSD symptoms um, had manifested physically. Mm -hmm. So it was my first understanding of, of, of really that trauma um, can reside in, in something that you know, Western medicine isn't connecting to trauma. Right. Or looking at the person as a whole, they, re we really in Western medicine, like to drill down to only one thing. And if it's not that, then we don't know how to help you. And I'm, I'm generalizing there. There are a lot of great yeah. doctors and also a lot of crappy doctors, right? So yeah. be mindful <laughs> with, but Lisa, I'm so grateful to be hearing another professional say, Hey, look, I had a lot of symptoms that weren't mental health related to my CPTSD, like autoimmune yeah. issues, same chronic pain yeah. issues, same. So if that's you, I'm just speaking to our audience real quick, Lisa, yes. if that's you, you have chronic issues of any kind. I would encourage you to dig a little deeper and see if there's some underlying trauma that is perpetuating that sometimes it's not. But in my experience, every person I've ever met with fibromyalgia, for example, and this is my experience, um, has trauma. Everyone, including me. So yikes. <laughs> yes. So, so, so getting back to your story, how, what you started learning about energy psychology, what happened mm -hmm. next? Okay. So uh, because I started to make such tremendous changes and, and just as an illustration of my changes. So when I was at my worst, like I, I obviously didn't have energy and I was in so much pain, I could barely move. Well, as I started to do this, I regained my capacity to move and I took dance back up again. And I became a very, very active dancer dancing six times a week. So that's pretty dramatic <laughs> from where I, I was. In the, in the midst of this professionally, I started to train in um, all the common trauma and energy psychology uh, modalities out there at the time, and I wanna say maybe for about three or four years, I was um, completely content and like getting the kind of changes I wanted to see. And suddenly I began to, to notice kind of a plateau. So I could work with someone who maybe had anxiety and get great results using these modalities. And then another person who seemed to have similar kind of anxiety and was really motivated you would hit roadblocks. I don't know if that happened to you, Tabitha, at all. Totally. And I mean, that that process right there is uh, helped me understand two things. Number one, and we're going to get there, AIT is a winner. <laughs> and number two, <laughs> everybody's different. We're mm. talking a lot these days. I'm just popping in here with an idea and we'll move yeah. on. We're talking a lot these days, at least where I'm frequenting social media and my reading about neurodiversity and what that means. And um, everybody has their own neurodiversity. That yeah. doesn't mean we can't be categorized, right? And sometimes we do that. Um, but every single person is different. And finding a modality that can work with every approach or every like neurodiverse approach to life, all the trauma that's happened is really unusual. So long story to say, yep, that's happened to me personally and professionally. <laughs> so what do yeah. you so I, I really resonate with that. And I think about um, when I was hitting these roadblocks, 
I was thinking, well, there must be something I'm missing, right? There's something, there's something, you know, like you're saying, like there, I need more tools. Like there's something I'm missing here to help people because I, I remember particularly someone that was incredibly genuine and I was like, well, what's missing here? And, you know, at the same time, I also sort of noticed in my own perf- kind of like personal trajectory that I felt much freer. I had regained a lot of like the, like the physical things I wanted to be able to do. And, um, but I don't feel like I had a sense of back to wholeness of like joy or really deep peace or a sense of kind of like letting all of me be there. So I was also in the back of my mind kind of thinking, you know, for myself as well, I've hit these blocks. What else could there be? So I was at an ASAP conference. This is 2005 and I took basics. (laughs) So I took this with Asha Clinton. She is the founder of AIT and was blown away. (laughs) By Asha or by AIT? Because amazing. (laughs) I sat in the front row. I volunteered for every demo. And <laughs> you were in it to win it. <laughs> I was totally, I was totally in it. I I have to say that like one of the lovely things about being a demo was that I got to immediately get this like firsthand experience of how incredibly powerful it was. And having done a lot of energetic trauma treatment, I already knew what that was like, but this got to another level and it got there fast. And not overwhelmingly. I mean, I can't speak to your experience, but it wasn't overwhelming for me. How was it for you? No, that was what was really so interesting is it got there quickly. It got there fast. And as you know, kind of there was this like moving through it, there was kind of a consolidation that was happening. Like I realized like this process had a way of kind of holding and containing and sort of taking a piece at a time what needed to be worked on. So that's to me, another thing that I really loved about the process is that it could be so intricately tailored to what your person's, you know, that that's kind of needs the neurodiversity, the kind of uniqueness of how it sits in someone that AIT has that capacity to go deep but also track someone. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful modality. One of the things that before we start digging into specifics of AI, because I do want to get there, but one of the things we were talking about um, earlier in this conversation is the components of a whole being. And so we've got the ones that most people know about mind, body, spirit, you know, heart, I would love to hear about the idea of spirit because that is defined very differently across different systems. So to hear what yours is, as well as what AIT defines the spirit as being. I love that. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I think that spirit is one of those things and even like spirituality that uh, has kind of as a culture, we've disconnected somewhat from. And so I love bringing that back in, but in doing so, really empowering people to define spirit for what is true for them. So definitely in AIT, and I think probably Tabitha and I both feel this way that that um, no one can tell you how to define that. So you have to decide, you know, what is spirit for you? If we start with just some basic things, um, and I just kind of looked up spirit just to kind of get a fresh feeling. And I like loved these things I wrote down. Um, the non-physical part of a person, the, the animating energy, um, the spirit is the, the, gives us the courage and determination to survive difficult things. So those are really kind of nothing to do with, let's say, a particular religion or traditional kind of um, practice, spiritual practice. It's really coming to you know, there is a part beyond your conscious mind that exists in the unconscious. And at the center of that is the spirit of guidance or wisdom. What does it, what does spirit for you bring up? For me, I think one of the things that I resonate most out of, especially the list you just read is that animating factor in the body, because um, it's not always an intentional thing, meaning you've used your mind for it, 
But I think it's the charge that we follow in energy psychology. Also, that's an electrical charge, right? So there's the science there. But when you're working with a client and they say, oh, now it's in my left shoulder. Oh, now it's in my hip. Oh, now it's in my ankle and it's moving. I think that is their attunement to where they're stuck in their body, where they're not stuck in their body. Um, and just to preview AIT, at this point in therapy, we've usually gone through where they're stuck in their mind. Like, how did this develop? And and I want to talk with you about that in just a minute. But as I mm-hmm. told you, we've got five minutes left of this <laughs> particular podcast. So I'm thinking, Lisa, we're going to do a part two, if you're willing. I would love that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> um, so let's wrap up this last chunk with how I would love to hear from you with your understanding of spirit and what that meant to you in your own healing journey. How did you get where you are at today, where AIT is the only modality you use? You are totally certified and capable of walking people all the way through certification. How did you end up there? What part of spirit got you there? Oh, such a lovely question. Um, back to when I was saying that that there was a missing piece for me. I have to say that that was really going deeper with my spirit. And I think also that the going deeper, the spirit means going deeper into love. So that meant for me, you know, clearing any of the blocks there that going back and getting all my early traumas out and being very thorough and dedicated in that process. And then finding, um, finding what, what spirit meant to me. I think a spirit also is synchronicity sort of like what's unfolding, you know, what's guiding me, what's, what's, you know, kind of like these breadcrumbs that are kind of like leading me someplace. So I really um, strongly lean into that in my life, Uh, dreams. So I feel like spirit comes through my dreams. And what I learned there, I started to do spiritual practices, I found kind of a spiritual tradition that I really resonate with, or can have many. (laughs) And so I, I, that informed it. But I feel like the what AIT did to liberate me from my trauma and bring my energy back um, also let me go deeper into loving myself and being able to give love. And then, of course, um, being able to hear my inner guidance and let that lead my life. And what a difference that is from those of us with developmental trauma who can't trust ourselves, other people, or the world for anything, let alone love. Yes. That's an amazing story. And I'm so grateful you shared it. Um, Thank you. And I would love to hear more sometime, maybe offline. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Great. So so I also, Lisa, just so you know, I have made a stance that for me personally, I am going to be... transparent about some things, not all things, because we all deserve privacy, Uh right? Um, So if you have more specific things you want to share, and that's comfortable for you about steps that you took, or Mm. realizations that you had, that's appropriate on this channel, because uh, this I've, I've just made it a platform where Mm. we can talk authentically about things. Because one of the things that was hard for me as a, um, a patient Mm. is people who are either neurotypical or because I'm not, um, or hadn't had no idea about the ins and outs of trauma that I had experienced, bless their hearts. They wanted to be helpful. And I did get benefit out of it. I'm not condemning. Right. But there just wasn't the understanding of what it's really like. And so I just wanted to advocate that if you think you have CPTSD and you're in Rhode Island, connect Um, with an AIT therapist and maybe Lisa, if she has time and energy in her practice, because it does make a difference to have somebody work with you. That's walked the road. Right. And I, especially with shame reduction. And healing is, is incredibly possible. So yes. Yes. Keep looking. looking. So we're just going to kind of pause right here. And I'm going to say, what else do you want to make sure that our listeners who are listening to this particular podcast, before we move on to part two, what do you want Uh, to make sure that they gather out of our conversation so far? And then we're going to say to be continued. 
So I would say that <clears throat> wholeness is possible for you, even if you're not experiencing right now. And even if the only thing that you're experiencing right now is feeling trapped in suffering, in pain, in complexity, know that there is hope. And whether you find that through AIT or another modality, that there is so much out there right now that is, exists, that didn't exist in the past, that's there to help you. And know that there is always help and support. And coming here on this podcast, I think you can continue to get that kind of support if you need that while you're looking to reach out for help. So we're glad that you're here. Absolutely. And that support is there. And I'll just put my two cents into this last piece, which is you're not alone. In fact, about half of the population in the United States potentially has complex trauma because of how simply how we were raised by our parents so or our caregivers. So be mindful that it's not just you and it can be repaired and you can feel whole again. So thank you for doing part one, Lisa. I'm just going to close us out with a couple of reminders that if you've made it this far, please like or comment. We would love to hear from you. If you have questions or issues you want us to address, you can go to the CPTSD um, website at CP, the, I will get it out there, the CPTSDpodcast.com. And there's a form that you can fill out a question that you might have. Um, we're going to come back with part two and talk more specifically about AIT and maybe even do a demonstration. So that's exciting to me. <laughs> Um, and we'll see you next time. See you then.